Shalom, Shalom Rastafari. Want to get into this week's uh, Shabbatical reading and feeding, which is a springing up right here. Very interesting. This particular reading and feeding, and it's called and known as, and this is Vayikra, Vayikra, or or read the Lewawian. And this particular reading and feeding, this is a painting here. Um, we're going um, from the Vayikra, the Hebrew book of of Leviticus, which is the Torah portion three. And for those who ask, when um, uh, numbers and um, when numbers and uh, Deuteronomy is a dagim, when that will be ready, and we're and, and we're working on it, my brothers and sisters. Um, when um, the midbar and uh, devarim, so we have. Um, three of the Torah portions, and of course, this is from the modern, the the present, you know, Judaic perspective, because it's like um, when Moses held up the the, the, the serpent, um, the brazen serpent in the wilderness, in order for the people to be um, healed of the seraphim, the fiery serpent bite. So this is us going through some of the so-called um, Judaic and modern Jewish teaching and becoming familiarized in our Torah portion readings and feeding. And here we're at this particular Torah portion reading and feeding, which is known, and here we go right here, which is known as um, Ahare, Ahare. Ahare Mot. Now, as we mentioned before, most of this can be, if you don't have the book, you can go to, um, go online to uh, Wikipedia, you know what I'm saying, Wikipedia, and see some of the notes there and kind of follow along with the studies and, and, and utilize that until or even in lieu of one's um, getting or purchasing, you know, um, our line of Judah book. But if you can, the book will be a very good companion, a go-along, a go-along go study companion for those who truly are serious about learning the half of the story, you know what I'm saying, concerning who we are as Beta Israel and more about this covenant, the Al-Kidan, as we've been pointing to in our teachings on um, our our birthright, you understand, our, our, our birthright, our name, our, our birthright, our nationhood as Beta Israel. It's very important on the, on the spiritual aspects, and we use that word not loosely, but there's a lot of folks who have different ideas of what so-called spiritual spirituality really is. And they say that what we're touching on right here is, um, is, is, is so-called religion, but, but there's, a, there's a positive application of religion and we'll say see um, the speech of his majesty on religion and you can check I and I video um, on I mean on spirituality his majesty speaking on spirituality but here we are right here in Ahare Ahare Mot Ahare Mot these are some of the different ways that it has been spelled and it's the Hebrew which means after Ahare means after or the full of it is ahare aharaye mo wo te ahare mot. In other words, after after death. Now they have mos here. That's how the Ashkenazis they pronounce it because the list, their ethnic list, they they um pronounce the th of the s sound. More correct is mot m o t, which means death. Some forms of the Ashkenazi and Sephardic actually have moth, so almost like moth. But moat, you understand? But moat means means death in the Shemitic languages. Now we can compare this, contrast and compare this with our Sabbath house reading, which you can download from the website for free, um, www.lojsociety.org. And here we're at the 29th. This is the 29th. So this is this week's uh, sabbatical. And we're just enlarging it so you can see it um, more full screen. And so here's where we're at right now. You understand? As of, uh, excuse I and I, let's bring this back. 
as of um, let's get a date a date check on this, and this is the Friday, May May fourth, and the Shabbat is May fifth. You know, May fifth has a great significance as well for us as um, Rastafari and for all faithful and true. Ethiopian Hebrews. It says, all those who say they're Ethiopian and recognize I and I holy al Kidan or this holy covenant. You see, that's that's what that's the 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 foundation of the true Ethiopia. So when you meet Ethiopians, find out um, what they not just think, but what what are their um, opinions? Should we say Astayayat? You understand, concerning the Holy Covenant. Uh, folks might not, you know, they have their own political opinions concerning His Majesty, but do they recognize the Kal Kidan? That's how you can distinguish the Kiddus or the Holy from the Profane. But this portion right here, Bamarinya, is called Komotu Bechala. Kemotu. Kemotu. So when you study the Fidel, this is how you begin off. Kemotu. Kamotu. This is the preposition Kamotu. From Motu. From his death. Or combined with this um, Bechwala. 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 Kamotu Bechwala. After his death. And in the Hebrew we have it as Ahare. Ahare. Ahare Mot. Ahare Mot. So. To say after may seem different. Hare, we have Hala, which is not really different if you understand how the L and the R linguistically can change place. And Macy in his work, Book of the Beginnings, and other linguists, um, Dillman and others have pointed that out. And it's a very interesting thing about how people are saying the same thing but are saying with a different accent. So what we see is two different accents here. We see the pure language, the royal Amharic, of the Metzhaf Kedus of Negus and Neges. And we see the Masoretic, which means traditional, like the tradition of the Jews is the Masora, the Masora. You understand? So in the Masoretic Hebrew, we have Ahare, Ahare, or one could pronounce as Ahala, Khala, Ahare Mot, Kamotu Bechala. Now, what does it comprise? What does it consist of? Now, as we move the chart over right here, we see that the first, the first reading, you understand, for this 29th, for this 29th Shabbatical is Leviticus chapter 16, verse 1, to Leviticus chapter 18, verse 30. So, without any further ado, let us get into this right here. So for the brothers and sisters that have the Schofield Study Bible, this will be very interesting. You'll be able to um, look at the footnotes for this particular teaching. And this particular um, 29th um, sabbatical reading and feeding, it concerns Yom Kippur, the Yom Kippur, or the Day of Atonement, the Day of Atonement, which is takes place in the fall festival, the fall festival of the seven, the day of atonement would actually be the sixth, the sixth of the seven high holy days for I and I as the Beta Israel in and according to the Kal Kidan and in according to the covenant. So let's uh, bring this over right here. Right, this is this program, this word program, and uh, excuse me, brothers and sisters, for not for not um, putting this up there so ones can download. I mean, you could probably search it out on the internet, but we're going to seek to do our best to to put this up out at the website. You understand? Put this up at the website. So we just conduct another search here. Let's go to the Leviticus chapter 16 and show you how when you use this software, you understand this Bible study software which it comprises a whole, a whole bunch of different books, many different books. That, that's, that's the beautiful thing. You know, that's the beautiful thing um, about this um, particular uh, software here. As we click on the tools right here, and this one, unlike the, the Yot uh, or the Yot, is, is, is in um, English. So it's a little easier to, 
to, to utilize. We click on the Strong's Numbers. And now what you get right here, if you look at this right here, it gives you each word, the particular Hebrew word. So what we're looking at is right here, we're looking at ahar, ahar, which means the hind or the hinder part, the ahar or the akar, you understand? And now it tells us over here exactly what, you know, the applications and how it's used in the KJV, the King James Version. So what we're seeing right here, before we can get to even the pure, the pure, um, language or, or, or really to overstand the Amharic, we should utilize this available um, software and technology right now um, that concerns the Bible software. And out of curiosity even, you know, begin to look at some of these particular words behind the text so we can overstand what the translators were working with or may have been working with. Now here, here we have mot said as mavet. Now, it's interesting, the word mot. Mot means death, right, in them heart. Mot was also the Canaanite god. There was a Canaanite god, you know, the Canaanites, inhabitants of the land. They, one of their gods was actually mot. Mm -hmm. One of the ancient gods was named mot of that particular region. Now, interesting, for them, they worship death. Now, here's, also, here's the key connection to this particular sabbatical. We're going to call this portion of the 29th um, sabbatical reading and feeding of the RSS. We're going to call this uh, the, the two goats, the two goats referring to the scapegoats, which is the major theme of this. But here we have moat, right, um, as, as three letters. Um, um, we have the, the meme, right, we have the wow, and we have the tau. You understand? Or the meme, the, the, the vav, and the tav, according to the Ashkenazi pronunciation. And we're looking at this right here. We're looking at this right here. It might be a little bit small right here, but it's the Hebrew. It's the, it's the three Hebrew letters that make up ma-wet, ma-wet, ma which bamar, in, in the Gutas, in the Gutas language, the older Ethiopic language, it is similar to the older Hebrew where the older word is mawet. They have mavet here contracted to um, 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 mavet, but really the, the V is wrong. The V is wrong. That's strictly Ashkenazi. They tell you right here, if you can see this right here, they tell you that's M-A-W. Then behind the W, they put a V. So you see the trick that they do. But basically they are pronouncing the Hebrew, the the um, Jews who call themselves Jews, the European Jews, mainly the Ashkenazi Jews, they speak Hebrew in a particular way because they have tweaked the language for their own ethnicity to better claim that they are the Jews, so forth and so on. But when we look at the roots of the Hebrew language, we know that the roots of the Hebrew language are Afro-Semitic. Hebrew is an Afro-Semitic language, which basically means it's a black African language. They don't tell you this in school. But if you do your study on the language, you will find this particular fact, a very important factoid concerning the Hebrew, that the Hebrew is an Afro-Semitic. Mm. It's an Afro-Semitic language. And the meaning right here, it says death, natural, violent, uh, concretely the dead, their place or state, Hades, which will be Sheol or Seol in the Hebrew, um, thoroughly, figuratively, pestilence or ruin. Now, using the King James Version, it is translated as dead or be dead or to be deadly. It's translated as death. It's translated as die or as one has died in its past tense particular sense. Now, if we bring up the Yota, we might be able to give you a little clearer. Let's see if we can bring up the Yota right here. We're going to bring up the Yota software and go to Leviticus 16 and 1. So here we are right here. Let's bring this a little more into focus so you can see this a little bit clearer. So here we go right here, right? Leviticus. Now we're going to click on this one right here, right? And here we're going to have, we're going to have, uh, have the, okay, on the side. So now as we go down to the Strong's, as you can see down here, we have the King James Version with the Strong's numbers, similar to the other program. So we're using these softwares here because the technology allows us to expedite our studies. 
if we just spend the time, learn, you know, learn how it's used, so forth and so on. So when we look at this word, the same word, death, let's click on it. Now, you see this over here? We'll have to bring this so you can see this full screen. And you can see what we're talking about. Right here is M. They don't have the Hebrew letters. The only shortcoming in this particular version of the program, they don't have the Hebrew letters. But still, they give you the transliteration so you can get the idea. Here they have Maves here. Here they have Maves. Now, I looked in the Guz. The Guz has Mowet. Mowet. Almost like that drink that people drink, Mowet. Yeah, Mowet. Mowet is death. So you're drinking death. Think about that with the Mowet. Mowt. Mowt means death. And it's older pronunciation. Mowat in the in the is, you know what I'm saying? And in the biblical Hebrew. Now it's forty one ninety four. And they they say it comes from the forty one ninety one, its root. It means death, the same thing we just read from the other program, the word program. Natural or violent, concretely, the dead, their place or the state, Hades or Sheol, figuratively, um pestilence or ruin, to be dead or to be deadly, death die, die. Now, a lot of our people are talking about like Kabbalah. You hear a lot of the um, the black uh, consciousness and the Afro consciousness. And it's good that they are at least getting into the Hebrew, even if it's through Kabbalah, through um, studying the so-called Jewish Kabbalah. It's very good that a lot of this present generation of, of, of you all, you know, of of, of the youth and this next generation of, of black people, this present generation is getting a little more conscious to um, the Hebrew and, and learning Hebrew. You have brothers like Rashid, um, brothers like Anup or Anpu, rather, who are pointing in that direction. Even brothers like Phil Valentine and others, and, 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 and even um, um, Bobby Hammond. So a lot of them have been trying to, like, peep you to it. The best way for us to really study this, this is what we propose as a society of his imperial majesty, the best way for I and I to study this is through the Ethiopic studies, you understand, and, and the Rastafari Bible, you understand, the homeschooling studies, because what we're going through is the entirety, the, the root, the groundation, the foundation of these particular teachings. Now, here what we have is is some of the word picture. Now let's go into this one. Let's zoom in on this one for a moment. So this particular portion is concerning the day of um is concerning the day of atonement. So we're gonna read a portion of this and then touch on the touch on the footnotes for this um present Torah portion reading and feeding. So in Leviticus chapter Leviticus chapter um, 16, speaking of the Day of Atonement, the Day of Atonement, which in the Hebrew is called Yom uh, Kippur, Yom Kippur, or some say Yom Kippur, Yom Kippur, Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. Now, we know as faithful um, Rastafari, that means truly on the Christ, the true Christ foundation, the foundation of Yeshua HaMoshiach, our black Lord and Savior. We know that Christ, Yeshua, the Moshiach, that he is our high priest, that he is our Kahin HaGadol. He is the high priest. And what's interesting, let's see if we can bring this up right here. What's interesting, because we got some pics right here that we want to use as, um, they say a picture can tell a, a picture a thousand words through a picture. A picture expresses a thousand words. So let's look at, remember the, the priestical outfit, outfit. So let's look at um, priest for a moment, right? Let's look at the word priest, and let's bring up some of the, the um, graphic or the art. You understand that helps to give us a, a, a visualization of of the priest, the Hebrew priest, the garment, so forth and so on. Now, we're not looking at this with a veil over our eyes, but we are looking at this this in Christ. So not with the veil over our eyes. So that means we are studying the Old Testament, but in the light or the illumination of our black Lord and Savior, revealed in the person of the King of Kings of Ethiopia. So we're studying this through revelation. 
You know what I'm saying? In Revelation. So it doesn't mean that we're studying the Old Testament without looking at the New Testament like some Jews do. That That's just continue to look at it with, a, with blinders on your eyes. But it's to accept the Moshiach. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and acceptance of the Moshiach. So here's the high priest outfit right there. So we know that Yeshua, Christos, Moshiach, is our high priest. Now as we study Leviticus 12, 16, uh, the present study before us, Leviticus 16, says, and, and, and Yahweh spake to Musa after the death of the two sons of Aaron. Remember the strange fire? So they died. When they offered before Yahweh, when they had made an offering before Yahweh of, of strange fire, you know what I'm saying? In other words, they did not follow instructions. That's basically what it means. They did not follow instructions. And it's interesting in um, the Vayikra, the Torah portion 3, you will come across this particular um, classical classical picture. Let's bring up this. This kind of expresses a little bit of it right here, this particular picture right here. Let's crop that and bring that over 